Tribe of Names, Simon here, and welcome to another pedal board build focused episode where we'll be looking at the genre of psychedelia. Hi there, my name is Simon Godfrey and I'm a professional musician who has spent the past 35 years working in and sometimes around the recording music industry, writing and performing music. On this channel, we provide tips and creative tricks for the aspiring songwriter and musician in you. So, psychedelia. While it had its heyday in the 60s and the early 70s, it has a very storied history and has pretty much been bubbling under as an influence in many other genres since then. Being a child of the 80s and the 90s, my exposure to psychedelia was sadly very limited, but when I finally discovered it, it was through the early albums of the Pink Floyd, and rather strangely enough through XTC's alter ego band, the Dukes of Stratosphere. And once I heard these albums, I realised exactly how deep and varied the psychedelic sound was. And for many years, I've wanted to write a psychedelic tune. Fortunately, at the end of 2019, inspiration finally struck and I was able to write a song called Mayfly, which is more at the poppy end of the psychedelia scale rather than the wild experimentation of the early Pink Floyd albums. But it was a psychedelic song nonetheless, and as Tribe of Names were going to play it as part of our Friday session series, I thought now's the time for me to put together a psychedelic pedal board. Ironically, when I first started researching how to achieve a psychedelic sound when it came to building a pedal board, it was not the phasers and the rotary speakers that were holding sway, it was the humble reverb. The more I researched into those bands of the 60s and 70s, I realised it was liberal amounts of reverb that was creating that wash in the background. And so I turned to my little stable of reverb pedals to try and recreate that sound. Another surprise that was waiting for me was the amplifiers that the psychedelic bands chose to use. While Jimi Hendrix was pounding away at his Marshall stacks and Pete Townsend was championing the high watt sound, most of the psychedelic bands were choosing Selma and Fender and Vox amplifiers to make that gritty cloud of psychedelia. Now that's not to say that I ignored the signature sonic swirl say that when you've had a few to drink, of those 60s hippie and psychedelic bands. So I suppose now is as good a time as any to talk about the specifics of what I put on my board. Now the first pedal on my board is a little bit counterintuitive, but bear with me on this as I chose the humble TS9 Tube Screamer. And my reasons for doing that is simply down to the fact that a lot of the outboard back in the studios of the day in the 60s were fairly primitive by today's standards. And this little box of tricks allowed me to get that sort of lo-fi sparkle that a lot of the psychedelic bands of the day were using. Now the next stomp on my pedal board probably won't come as much of a surprise for you. And it's also one of my favorite pedals of the moment and that's the JHS 3 Series Chorus. Now this provides that sonic swirl that I mentioned earlier on, that sort of mechanical finger on the tape flange in the studio Beatles-esque kind of swirl which I love so much. I'm not going mad with it but it has to be there because otherwise you know what psychedelia without a little bit of Whoa. Now referring back to those Selma, Vox and Fender amps earlier rather than going with a plug-in in Logic Pro X I decided this time that I would use my Strymon Iridium which is my go-to DI box whenever we do our Friday studio sessions. And the reason why I chose this Strymon Iridium this time around is because it actually has a very good Vox setting which gave me that kind of chime that I was after. And finally, as mentioned earlier, it is my humble opinion that there is no such thing as psychedelia without reverb. And for that purpose, I chose the Hall of Fame 1 pedal. I love this pedal very much. In fact, I've got the Hall of Fame 2 as well. And for the purposes of the demonstration that I'm about to play for you now, I've got this on the splashiest spring setting that I can possibly get away with. I hope you enjoy this slice of psychedelic drama. Psychedelic drama.
so I think we're all aware of that cosmic out there experimentation that bands like the Pink Floyd indulged in during their earlier albums. But if I'm being really honest with you, I think there's one element of psychedelia which we're probably much more familiar with, and that's the pop end of psychedelia. And when you combine pop with psychedelia, you're really only talking about one band, and that's the Beatles. Now in this instance, I'm gonna be dialing back significantly on the Ibanez Tube Screamer, just to give it a little bit of twang. I'm gonna be using hardly any chorus at all because there were no chorus pedals back in the day, not in the way that we understand them. I'm gonna be pulling back on the spring reverb for this one, but I am gonna be using exactly the same setting for the Vox Amp on the Strymon Iridium because let's face it, when we're talking Vox Amps, the very first band that we're gonna be thinking of is the Beatles. So here we go, a bit of pop. I wanted to do that sort of Paul McCartney thing, but I don't really have the hair for it any longer. <laughs> Thank you very much for sticking around for this very cursory dive into the enormous world of psychedelia. It's a fantastic genre that reaches out into many other styles of music. It's well worth investigating if you have the time. We'll play you out with the final half of Mayfly that was recorded at last week's Friday session with Tribe of Names. And if you like what you see, please click subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes come out. And we hope, Tribe of Names, you're doing well. This is Simon Godfrey. We'll see you around. Goodbye.